State Highway Patrol, Corporal Kerr speaking. There has been an accident at Trimble Road in the expressway. A car and truck are involved. You say two persons have been killed and there are several others injured. Have you called an ambulance? Your name? Telephone number. 764. Okay on the signal 30 en route. Okay on the signal 30 en route. Signal 30, the code that has a morbid meaning to the men of the Ohio State Highway Patrol. Signal 30 is the phrase that means another violent death on the highway. Another life snatched by carelessness. Another bloody statistic in the mounting toll of traffic's cost. Put yourself and your family in these untouched, unstaged scenes. You or a loved one of yours can easily be a Signal 30. We are at the scene of a double signal 30. Two lives have been lost, wasted because of the senseless violation of a simple, easy to obey traffic regulation. A truck loaded with cattle is moving along an expressway. From a feeder road, a passenger car containing seven people, five of them children, ignores a stop sign, moves onto the expressway into the path of the truck. This is the sickening result. The truck literally ran over the passenger car. Two people are dead, the driver of the truck and a child in the car. Two others are critically injured. The driver of the passenger car violated a stop sign where visibility in both directions was excellent. His own neglect and stupidity cost the life of his daughter and the life of a man who just happened to be in that place at that time. And here is the same area in which the twin fatality occurred. Only a few are paying attention to the red octagon, which is the universal signal for stop. Even boys on their bikes pump blissfully across the highway with no thought as to the meaning of the stop sign. What prepares a state highway patrolman for his exacting job? First, a period of rigid training. There is work in the classroom that covers law, situation, and procedure. There is physical training to sharpen the already splendid condition of the candidate. But something more must be there even before training starts. A spirit of dedication to the job that must be done. The combination of dedication, physical condition, classroom proficiency, personality, and adaptability all add up into an effective alert officer. These men will represent the state in its respect for law. After the exhaustive and sometimes exhausting training comes assignment and then the lessons that only experience can teach. The state highway patrolman has many duties that can be called routine. Among them, the spot checking of cars. This patrolman and his fellow officer are checking vehicles for safety factors, lights, horns, stoplights, and windshield wipers. This spot checking often finds minor troubles that are not known to the driver, causing him to be more mindful of the basic safety factors built into his car. It is, at best, a routine check, but it has its purpose in promoting a better safety record. The sign that denotes the speed limit of this particular zone is conspicuous, and so is the disregard for the sign's warning. The truck is ignoring it, and the result of such futile carelessness teaches a grim and grisly lesson. Two trucks are approaching each other. One is laboring up a hill. The other is moving at least 20 miles per hour faster than the legal posted limit. A minor fender bender has occurred at the bottom of the hill. When the truck driver sees the minor crash, he hits his brakes. The fully loaded semi-trailer jackknifes into the path of the slow-moving truck. This is the raging, furious result. Two men are dead because one of them was too smart.
to obey a speed limit warning. While one of the drivers burned to death in his cab, the other was blown through the floor of the cab of his truck by the force of the explosion that followed the initial impact. His body could not be removed until the fires had been extinguished and the wrecked trucks separated. You've seen the blackened body of a dead man in a horrible death, far from family and friends and even farther beyond help. And you see the beginning of a final ride as one of the drivers is carried away, a mass of charred flesh. Had the speeding truck driver observed the 45 mile per hour speed limit, there would have been a plus safety factor. There would have been no death. How many ifs dominate your driving habits? Meet the passenger, painfully, though not seriously injured. Now, meet the driver, bumped about considerably, but surprisingly helped. The driver of the car lost control of the vehicle. The car skidded 165 feet off the right side of the road, hit an embankment, went 27 more feet, rolled end over end for 108 feet, knocked down a fence, rammed into a post on which several mailboxes were mounted. The crossbar is seen piercing the car as it narrowly missed the driver and the passenger on the way to the left rear door. One man injured painfully, the other scared stiff with only a hazy recollection of what happened. This is the result of driving carelessly with only casual attention given to the important mechanics of driving. A railroad crossing and a pickup truck are the basic ingredients here. When the freight train hit the panel truck, the gasoline in the truck exploded and turned it into a funeral pyre for an aging, hard of hearing farmer. In spite of warnings and education, the toll taken at rail crossings remains foolishly hot. Probably the most needless among many unnecessary ways in which to meet death. It was a country road, and although no flasher system was in operation, visibility was good in both directions. The engineer of the train saw the truck approaching and sounded his whistle some 500 yards from the crossing. The elderly farmer who moved carelessly onto the tracks probably never saw, much less heard, impending death. Rail crossings, wherever they are, carry a responsibility to the driver of a car the responsibility of extreme caution. So the sickening, stiffened, charred mass that once was a man is removed. Every accident has at its base a violation of a traffic rule. Reckless operation of an automobile opens up a multitude of driving sins. Here on a state route, whether by speed or other causes, the driver loses control of his car. The vehicle rolls over, throwing the driver out and pinning him under the wreckage. Death most certainly has resulted from all appearances. 20 men are careful in lifting the car bodily because it is feared that rolling the car over might aggravate the injuries of the victim, if indeed he is alive. The 20 men hold the car up while others gently remove the body. But a guardian angel hovered close to the man. He was found to have only serious injuries, nothing fatal. He lived to tell about it. Did he boast of beating death? Well, perhaps we don't know. Maybe he lived to tell others of the folly of driving recklessly. Maybe he was spared so that he could tell others that traffic laws are effective weapons against death and injuries only when they are obeyed. There's trouble ahead, trouble that may or may not be a signal 30. What will we find? A minor mishap? Or will we look upon the stark face of death? A 17-year-old boy driving a red convertible comes over a hill crest and rams into a red hardtop 
that came out of a side road. Here is the young man, critically injured. And this is his car. And here is the ultimate big spender in this tragedy. A visitor from a neighboring state. He has only a few hours to live as he sustains multiple injuries, any one of which would have been fatal. And this is the passenger in the dead man's car, painfully hurt because the driver of the car disregarded a common, easy-to-observe law. He had moved from a side road onto a main highway with no regard for oncoming traffic. The three or four seconds he tried to save cost him his life for his failure to yield the right of way. He is sprawled on the ground, already showing the pallor the doomed assume. Notice the care with which these torn victims are handled by the ambulance men and patrol. These men are using far more care in their work than the drivers of many cars show in their own driving habits. Under the green blanket is the driver of the convertible, while the driver of the hardtop lies only a few hours away from death. Another victim of the careless disregard of laws that were made not to restrict drivers, but to protect them. The man and his wife were in the area to attend her mother's funeral the next day. Thus, 14 hours before that sad ceremony, her husband met his death. The end of a trip to a funeral was simple in this case, another funeral. 